हेलो गाइज वट्स आप सो आई एम हियर विद द नेक्स्ट लेसन ऑफ माई कोर्स ऑन एनिमल क्लासिफिकेशन एंड इट्स मी इफ्तार खान सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट राइट अवे सो इट्स अबाउट मी एम्स ट्वेंटी थर्टीन टेंथ रैंक फॉलो मी एट अन अकेडमी डॉट इन स्लैश यूज स्लैश इफ्तार खान सो वॉट बेसिकली सो टूडे विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द फाइल एम सिल एंड ट्रेटर so what basically this should come to your mind when i talk about cylindrate so uh, the thing that should come to your minds are jellyfish the coral reefs uh that's about it for now and we'll see what's next so firstly i'll talk about the habitat uh, like the porifers they are also aquatic uh mostly are marine but few are fresh water also you can take the example of hydra which is fresh water so what are the habits of living so they can be of two types they can either be solitary that is that they can live alone like a single organism or it can be colonial colonial can be a uh, they a lot of them aggregate at one place and they form a colony of sorts It's, the best example are uh, is the great barrier reef or the other coral islands or coral reefs they are the best examples so the solitary i told you hydra which is a single organism and it does not live in a colony the colonial are physalia gorgonia obelia which are basically uh basically few of them are corals while some of them are not corals there are other forms so uh, they can also be of two types sessile and free swimming or free flowing so the sessile ones are the those which are attached to the substratum with a solid support while uh the free swimming ones as the name is enough the name is self explanatory there are free flowing or free swimming so in the free flowing or free swimming ones we got physalia and aurelia which is the jellyfish while physalia is the portuguese man of war in the sessile ones we have gorgonia which is sea fan and meandrina and other corals uh so then we should talk about the body symmetry so in this case like uh and like the sponges which were asymmetrical they are radially symmetrical that is when we cut from any of the planes they when any of the vertical planes they are cut in an equal halves in two equal halves when we cut from the central axis the level of the organism organization is tissue level which means that the cells are organized into tissues the germ layer these are diploblastic that is they only have an ectoderm and endoderm it is two layers in the embryonic stage ectoderm and an inner endoderm with an intervening layer of mesoglea which forms the jelly like form which helps in forming a jelly like form in some of the cylindrates like like you guess it right jellyfish uh then we'll talk about the digestive tract of the cylindrates so keep in mind that the digestive tract is incomplete that is they have a central gastrovascular cavity and they only have a single opening outside which is called the mouth that is it helps in ingestion and also in excretion or the removal of waste material or the undigested food so basically mouth is an aperture which is present on hypostome so what is the meaning of hypostome hypo means lower or lesser and stoma means stome means stoma 
or mouth so entry of food and exit of waste material takes place through this that as i told you so central cavity is called the gastrovascular cavity because it helps in both digestion of food and circulation so gastro relating to digestion and vascular relating to circulation another important structure in these organisms are the tentacles which are basically elongated flexible structures which are able to contract as well as elongate as and when needed they help in feeding feeling and gas grasping of food. okay got it they help in feeding feeling and grasping of prey now we are going to talk about specialized characteristic cells nidoblast or nidocytes as we all know the cellentrates are also known as nidarians and that word has been derived from these cells only okay these are basically the stinging cells these are the stinging cells and basically their function is anchorage defense and for capture of prey so what um, what do we mean about anchorage so basically in the free swimming nidarians whenever they need to anchor or stay at a place these nidoblast helps in this function these cells help in the addition of nidarians on the surface they move they also help in the capturing of prey so basically the thread tubes when discharge this thread tube when discharge this thing this is the thread tube when discharged uh they basically coil tightly around the hair or the bristles of the prey which prevents its movement and it helps in killing it uh needle blast are also used for defense by nidarians as these cells protect these animals against the attack of other animals which can be by either paralyzing them or by killing them with the help of toxin and spines toxin one of the known toxin is hypnotoxin so this is the diagram of a nidoblast so as you can see so uh now i'll be talking about the digestion part so uh in the digestion part is quite interesting in this case uh that it help it is uh, ta- it takes place in two forms extracellular digestion and intracellular digestion firstly the food that comes to the gastrovascular cavity is acted upon by various enzymes and which help in the initial ba- breakdown breakdown of the food then after that a smaller frag- fragment of the food is then engulfed by body cells and digested within the food vacuoles of the nidocytes or the nidoblast or the under cells so hence the digestion is first extracellular and then intracellular uh then i'll talk about the skeleton which have a hard skeleton which is formed of calcium carbonate so just a part of it is left so i'll talk about this in the next lecture as we are out of time in this one so bye bye and take care